But what do you think of the encounter between Jesus and this person who has been ill for 38 years? Well, this morning, uh, our focus is on this passage, and it is very much a result of my meditation. And uh, I hope um, we are not going to do much Bible searching or uh, Bible teaching as such. Um, but I'd just like to share with us, there are some serious considerations which provides food for thought. And uh, I hope um, by sharing this with us this morning, uh, you will be able to reflect and uh, ask God to show you what He is going to say to you. Now firstly, uh, what do we see in this person? It's a person with illness for 38 years. Now, can you imagine what life is like for this person? Living perhaps on a handout and uh, depend on friends and family for his many things, you know, whereabout and uh, if he needs to go anywhere, he needs their help. And uh, John has given us the account of this man lying there and uh, hoping that something might happen which can cure him. Now, we don't know how long he has been there, we know that he has been in this condition as an invalid for 38 years. Now, even if he has been there for a relatively shorter period, you could imagine when he sees people walk through them and uh, doing their household and daily affairs, and yet he's lying there. He can't join any festivals. Jesus went up to the festival, right? You could imagine there's a lot of noises, a lot of laughters, and yet he would be excluded. And uh, so life for him must be quite miserable. Now, however, we have an unexpected visitor, and uh, Jesus went to that place, he saw many people lying there, but Jesus homed in on him. He deliberately went for him. Why? We don't know. Does he know Jesus? I don't think so, because if you refer to your Bible in verse 38, uh, verse 13, after he was healed, people asked him, well, come on, who healed you? And he couldn't give a name. He said, look, I don't know that guy. He just came and did that on me. Now, so obviously he doesn't know Jesus. Maybe he has heard of Jesus, but he doesn't know the identity, you know, the, the, the person himself. Now, is he a good person? Is that why Jesus went to see him? No, I don't think so. Because in verse 14, again, after he was healed, and Jesus met him again in the temple, and Jesus said to him, look, you are well again. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. Now that will imply that perhaps his illness has something to do with his sin, right? So anyway, there's not much we can you know, know about this guy other than he has been lying there, hoping to get to the water when the water is stirred. Now, according to the popular belief, whether that is true or not, we don't know. And the people say, look, when the water is stirred, that is caused by angel. And the first guy, the first person who get into the water will be healed. But only one person. Only the first person that gets to the water. So, so he, that guy, just lying there, but Jesus went to see him. And 
Jesus took the initiative. He needed not to go there, but he did. With all these people around, Jesus only went to see him. I think that is an act of grace, isn't it? Why me? Why him? So Jesus was totally un uninvited, unexpected, but what Jesus did on this man changed his life entirely. Now, so when I, when I reflect and meditate on this, uh, on this passage, I look, at, I look back in my life and I ask myself, have I met someone or anyone who has changed my life for the better? Or changed the course of my life? Maybe a friend whose advice has helped you to make a certain decision which brings you to where you are now. I don't know. Do you have such a person? Now for myself, uh, I thank God that for this special person who helped me to make sense with the Bible as God's word in my teenage years. Though he was a busy man, he was a family man with a demanding job, and yet he gave his time to guide me in my Christian walk. We did Bible study together. He gave me godly advice that laid a firm foundation in my early Christian life. I thank God for bringing him into my life because without him I will not be where I am now serving God and serving God's people in Sydney. It's totally beyond my imagination. As a young person I could never never imagine in my wildest dream that I will be living overseas and uh, doing what I'm doing now. I owe God who changed my life, my entire life, through such people. Now, can you see God's hand in your life? Do you realize that God can change your life entirely, like the way he did on this young man, on this old man, sorry, this sick man? Now, however, Jesus did not just went and healed him, but he asked this man a question. Do you want to get well? Now that's the focus of our meditation. Do you want to get well? What do you think of this question? Well, it's a bit of a strange question, asking a guy who, who is who is ill? Surely he wants to be healed, don't you? Do you think that perhaps this is just a senseless, maybe um, somewhat stupid question? Now, as I think about it, then I think, well, maybe, maybe it is not as simple as that. Now, sometimes you know, our emotions is rather complex. And uh, there's something that may hold us back and say, look, do I really want to get well? Now, I know it seems strange that per surely a person who is not well would like to get well. Well, maybe before you want to get well, the first question perhaps you ask is, am I sick? Right? If I'm not sick, then I don't need to see a doctor. I don't need to get healed. I don't need to get any attention, medically or otherwise. So as I was thinking, now, am I sick? But there are many incidences or many minor things which may indicates that we may be sick, but we do not know. Well, for obvious things like cold, or nowadays if we are hit by the viruses, then yes, we know that, you know, we are down and we are not well, we need to be healed. However, 
There are other sickness that can cause us harm. For example, like depression. There are many people who suffer depressions. And uh, I read an article which makes me really, really sad and upset. And uh, I don't know her, but apparently this lady in America, uh, she had put up things uh, online and many people followed her. And uh, she's actually a sufferer, a sufferer of depression. But then she shared her experience and uh, she shared her journey on the uh, internet, and uh, which helped people. And then suddenly, out of a blue, all the articles, all the things has been deleted. And people wonder why. Then the family put up a note on the Instagram and said, she's died, she killed herself. Now, when I saw that, I said, look, wow, you know, really, depression, it's a, uh, it is a number one um, threat to many people's well-being. And sometimes we do not realize, and we do, we do not notice behind the face of a normal person, you know. And then I ask myself, well, am I not well? I'm not referring to physically or uh, psychologically or emotionally, you know. Perhaps, do I have any thing wrong in me in terms of my bad behavior any defects in my personality anything that is not quite right that can stop me from getting help you see my point if you don't notice you need help then you never bother to do anything with it so as I meditate on this now perhaps, perhaps, when Jesus asked that man, "Do you want to get, do you want to get well?" can apply to me too. Spiritually, do I need to be fixed up? Do I need to put right with God something that I take it for granted or I did not even notice? So sometimes I think. We might be just confused, you know, well, am I well? Am I not well? Am I sick? Now, I can think of a person who, ha who is unwell, but uh, this person is rather confused by, by the voices and the advices given to her. <clears throat> Some says, well, she actually has a condition of her, of, her, of her knees and she's suffering for it for a long time. And people said, look, you need to see a specialist. Perhaps you need to get your knee replaced to get a new pair of knees. Then, you know, it will cure your pain. Does she want to get help? Does she want to get well? I don't know. Maybe she's hearing advices from others on one hand, but then when she hear there are some who had knee replacement and life was still miserable. Maybe there's a minor, you know, a minor, uh, um, a group of minority who even get worse after the knee replacement. So therefore, you know, she's so confused. Well, no, that stops her from getting well. Now, maybe in this, in this person who saw Jesus and said, look, well, who are you? I don't know you. You're a complete stranger. Are you a doctor? Can you help me? Okay, I'm not well, but, you know, what can you do? So sometimes I think, you know, this can stop us from seeking help. I think the second obstacle could be fear. Sometimes fear can stop us from going for help. 
。那 fear is a very strong emotion, and sometimes it can stop us from making logical and rational decisions. And、uh, again, using my friend's example, I ask her, "Say, look, don't you want to have a better legs?" She said, "Yes, but I think I can see that." You know, she said, "Well, some people say after the operation is really painful, so maybe it is a pain. I don't know what fear she has." Maybe she can't trust the surgeon. Some surgeons are good, and some are not so good. How can I tell that I will get the best surgeon or this surgeon who can do a successful operation on me? You know what I mean? She's so uncertain. She can't trust herself with this operation. So that's the baseline. Now, maybe this guy. Who has the same fear? I don't know, but he replied to Jesus. So look, I've no one to help me. Of course, I want help, but he wants that help. He said, "Look, when the water is stirred, when I try to get in, but other people got in first ahead of me because he's invalid. Maybe he tried to crawl and." He wasn't the first one to get in, so therefore he missed his turn. Well, he said, "Look, I've no one to help me. Can't trust. Well, no one can come to him, you know. And、uh, well, I think that's another thing that can stop us from getting help or getting healed is." Comfort. What do I, what do I mean by that? I think we all have a comfort zone. Yeah, we like to stay in our familiar environment, and even though it may not be pleasant, but we got used to it. So, again, again, I'm just saying for myself, right? Sometimes you walk into your room. Well, you don't see anything wrong with it. Only when you come to, you know, decorations. Wow, I didn't realize there's so much dirt behind the drawer. You know, there are so much dust which I did not notice. You know, under the bed. We're so comfortable with our environment. Now, again, it can apply to our lives. We're so comfortable with our own faults, with our own defects. You mean I lost my temper? I never lose my temper. I raise my voice, yeah, because I want to make a point. Really? Yeah, because you could hear me. Can you see what I mean? Sometimes we are so familiar with our, you know, personality defects, our wrongs, and we make excuses for it. We say, okay, well, it's all right. I'm like that. Do you want to get help? Do you want to be changed? So we are just comfortable with our environment, and、uh, maybe some bad habits. We're so comfortable with it, we don't want to let go. It's a bit like that man. Well, maybe I'm ill for thirty-eight years. I can't get used to it now. Thirty-eight years is a long time. It's a generation. Come to think of it. Jesus is no more than just you know thirty or thirty three, you know most historians and、um, Bible scholar, you know put it down to you know he、uh, he went about in his public ministry and he, you know around about thirty years old. So this man has been in this condition for thirty eight years, longer than the lifetime of Jesus when he was on earth. And、uh, maybe he was so used to his own lifestyle. Well, come come to think of it, he's not working. People do it for him. I can I can get used to it, isn't it? Get all the food prepared, 
and brought over to me. And afterwards, I don't have to do any washing up. Okay, I can't move, but people can take me to the place where I want. I can get used to it. Maybe that guy is tempted. Well, do I want to get well? Do I want to change my life? Maybe I'm okay after all. Maybe I've come to the point that I've given up. I'm after all. I'm an old man now. Older man now. Do I want to pursue a different lifestyle? Now all these things、uh, can stop us from seeking help and getting well. But then there's something, something that Jesus points out too in his life. There is sin, which we will come to later on. But then Jesus came to him in a moment when he was least expecting. He was still hoping and watching if the water is stirred, and if so, I make sure I'll be the first one to get in. But Jesus is the one who helped him, not the water. Jesus just simply told him, "Get up, pick up your mat, and walk." Notice, in many miracles, people went to ask Jesus for help. They begged for mercy. But this guy didn't even know Jesus. Hasn't expressed any desire. Or, uh, 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 or or faith in Jesus, but Jesus took pity on him and said, "Look, get up, pick up your mat and walk." And at once, the man was cured. He picked up his mat and he walked. Was given a new life, and、uh, you can imagine. Now he can go back to his family、uh, with his own feet. And live a normal life. He can join in the festival in Jerusalem, and、uh, he can go to the temple and worship. And that's where Jesus met him. And Jesus said to him, "Now that you're well, stop sinning. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you." Now, to this man. He doesn't need. Sorry, he needs more than just to be restored physically. He needs to be restored and cured and healed physic,、uh, uh, uh, spiritually. Yes, his illness is connected with his sin. Now, here I have to explain and、uh, make it clear: not all illness is caused by sin. You can't put an equal sign. You're not well because you have sin. No, 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 no. That's too simple and it's too damaging. However, there are some illnesses which can be caused by sin. For example, right? If someone who lives a life of、uh, you know, Drunkenness, heavy smoker. Can you imagine the, the condition of his lung and the liver? So when the person suffers from a collapse of liver, you wonder why. Well, can you see the lifestyle is connected and affects his health. Now, in some way, that's more than that. Now, if a person who lives Loosely, and and uh, and uh, suffered, say, venereal disease or something even worse. What's wrong? What because he lived or she lived a sinful, licentious, you know, life, and、uh, so as a result, he or she suffered for it. So therefore, you know, so, so there is a connection. So we don't know in this case what sin this man has been doing, but Jesus simply said, "Look, you know it. 
Stop. Don't go back to that. Don't go back to your former way of living. There's something that caused your condition before, and if you don't stop, it will come back even worse. Something worse may happen to you. And I think uh, this is also a reminder and a warning to us that yes, Jesus can make us well. Do you want to get help? Do you want to get well? Jesus can. But Jesus cannot stop you sinning. If you want to go back to sin, or to, to live a sinful way, then Jesus said, look, something worse may happen to you. However, in a positive way, but if you want to live a new life, right, again, it's only Jesus who can give you. Now, going back to that man, all along, he was banging his hope on the water being stirred, and then when it happened, he'd be the first one to go down. But Jesus said, look, you don't need that. But in some way, he's saying to us, look, if we try to help ourselves, if we use our own way, ah, uh, well, you can wait. Whether that happens or not, in reality, we don't know. It may be it is uh, superstitious, maybe it is something, it's a hearsay of the popular uh, um, belief that is going around in the community. I don't know. Because if so, then there, would be so, there won't be so many people lying there. Right? If that happens a lot, all these people will be healed. But the fact is that there are so many people lying around, hoping that one day the water is stirred and then the lucky one to get down first will be healed. But Jesus said, look, to that man, get up, walk. And he was given a new life. Now, and, uh, I, and I start to think, well, why did that man, what about the others? There's no answer to that. But I think sometimes in life, we are a bit like this, isn't it? We have a chance to hear and meet with Christ. We have a chance to, you know, come to Jesus and to be healed. And we have a chance even when we can hear Jesus asking, do you want to, he to be healed? Do you want to get well? Well, I think uh, something first to think about, isn't it? As I, as I said earlier on, maybe as Christians we need to reflect and ask, am I unwell? How am I doing spiritually? How is my relationship with God? Maybe I'm getting too used to my own way and I have gone so far that God's voice becomes such a distant voice, I begin to hear less and less of God speaking to me. And that's why last week I share that it is important to spend time before God and listen to Him. So I think today is a good time to reflect. Have I lost my first love for God? If so, Jesus is asking the same question. Do you want to get well? Do you want to rediscover the excitement, the joy, the love that you had when you came to me? Good thinking, isn't it? Worth thinking, isn't it? Do you want a new life? Do you want to turn back? Do you want to set your direction? towards God again. And if you are outside God's kingdom, maybe Jesus is a stranger to you. Maybe people say, well, Jesus is only one of the people, one of the religion, and uh, it doesn't work on me. 
Yes, some people who said that. But it's up to you to find out. This stranger of Jesus who comes to your life, like the way he did to this invalid, and he just simply points it out to him. After, you know, after he has been healed, when Jesus met him again, Jesus said, look, I can heal you physically, but there's something wrong in your life. You need to get rid of the sin. Maybe Jesus is saying to us too, like, sin is a root cause of our problem. Do you want to get rid of it? If you want to enjoy your new life, the life that only Jesus can give you, then you must, therefore, listen to Jesus and ask him, say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Yeah, there's many things wrong in me. And uh, have mercy on me. Yes, I don't want to be living in the same way as before and just be led by my own temper. Yes, I don't want to live as a selfish person. Yes, there are many habits which I think is okay, but no, I want to get rid of it now. I want to change my life. Can you help me? Now Jesus said, look, yes, get up and walk. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have used this passage to speak to us. Lord, we give you thanks that you have come to us in such a way that you have made change in our lives and, and uh, you have given us new life in Christ. Lord, we give you thanks. But there are many times that we have allowed our love to, for you to go cold. And there are many times that we walk our own way and uh, we don't even realize that we are sinning against you. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. Lord, we pray that you help us to come before you and ask for your healing. Lord, help us to be well spiritually. Lord, we also pray for others who do not know you yet. Lord, we pray that you will open their eyes too, so that they will know their real condition and give them a desire to get well. Lord, we also pray that they too will be healed emotionally as well as spiritually, so that they will be right with you and live a life of joy, a life with hope, a life eternal, which you have in store for us in Christ. Lord, this is our prayer, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.